How to paint a full moon with acrylics on 11 by 14 canvas. First, you need to trace a circle for your moon. The circle that I used was seven and a quarter inches in diameter, but you can use any similar size. We're gonna use a three quarter inch flat wash brush and start with the color titanium white. We're gonna paint the entire sky around the moon first. And what I'm doing is I'm applying with my three quarter wash brush, titanium white around the moon. So about the width of that brush, I am applying a ring of white. We're gonna do wet on wet blending to get this sky to blend from a light blue to a dark blue. Then dip your brush in phthalo blue without rinsing the brush and blend the blue in with the white. The phthalo blue will blend with the white to create a lighter blue color. As you go reload the brush, load just the little corner of the tip of the brush in the blue so that you don't apply too much blue to your brush and blend it in with the white. Keep painting over your strokes until it blends. You don't wanna to be too dark in this area. It should be a nice light blue. And if you need to load more white on your brush, you can do that if that helps with the blending. So I'm basically just smoothing out my um, paint and I added a little bit more white to my brush so that the white blends in with the blue a little bit more, okay? And as you work your way towards the edges of the canvas, you're gonna have more blue on your brush and less white. And pretty much by the time you get to the edge, it should be a pure phthalo blue. And we'll be blending in Payne's Gray um, later in this step. So continue to paint in circles all around the moon so that your color blends to a darker shade of the blue. So keep going, keep working those colors, getting that white to blend with the blue, getting the blue to be nice and pure by the time you get to the edges. And you can see that I occasionally go and add more white to my brush and that helps get some nice, um, pretty light blue streaks in there. And um, you are, you're going to fill up the whole canvas. So those corners, those are also gonna be a more pure phthalo blue but what I'm doing is I'm adding more white in here just to help with the transition and then I'm going to go all the way to the corners with that phthalo and you can see even though the um, the I'm still painting in circles it goes off the canvas so when I get to the corners I'm still painting in a curve formation um, but it's going off the canvas and if you want to you can go ahead and paint the phthalo blue on the sides what I did was I waited until the very end of the painting and I actually did Payne's Gray on the side. Okay, so speaking of Payne's Gray, that's the color I'm gonna use next. I didn't even rinse my brush off. I just loaded it in with the Payne's Gray and the corners are gonna be this dark color. Payne's Gray is um, a very, very dark gray color that has a hint of blue in it and it blends nicely with that phthalo blue because that phthalo is already a very dark blue. Um, but it might be kind of tricky to blend at first. You can see how dark it is compared to the phthalo. And so when you go back in and blend, you wanna gently bring that th the panes into the phthalo um, so it doesn't really take over. But you can see how fast, because that, that color is so dark, it can easily take over. So brush very gently into the area it blends and you may have to go back in with some more white and blue to help with that transition so you can see how dark it is and all of a sudden we have a jump to light blue but I go back in there and add some more white and blue okay so I don't even rinse my brush at all while painting the sky so that white in there it kind of helps it fade back a little bit the white is going to make it look a little bit more gray but that was okay all right, um, since we're not rinsing the brush at all, 
your brush might get overloaded with paint. So if that's the case, you can always get a paper towel and you can wipe off your brush and um, then dip it back in. I always sometimes find that better than rinsing it off because adding all that water to that brush gets it makes it kind of hard to because you get all that water on your brush after you rinse it off. It can um, you run the risk of the raw water dripping down into the paint and um, getting adding allowing the water to run with the paint. And sometimes it's just easier to wipe the paint off yourself with the paper towel. Okay, so I am basically just going in and doing some touch-ups here. I think it looks fine, but I'm just going in and kind of gently brushing these colors, working the paint a little bit more. Um, doesn't have to be a perfect transition, just, just so that it's lightest next to the moon. So we get that glow from the moon and darkest um, towards the edges of the canvas. Okay. I'm going to add a few more white streaks in there. After I paint the moon, I went in and I added some um, more of the white around it because I liked that look of the, the moon ring that's around the moon. So sometimes when it's when we have a full moon and there's clouds in the sky, we can see this um, sort of hazy circle that goes around the moon. So I wanted to sort of represent that here. But right now I'm just adding... Um, some white streaks to get make my circle kind of more defined here. I got a little bit of um, blue too close to the moon, so I'm trying to get that to be a little bit lighter right here. And so you don't want to overdo this. Um, if you keep going and keep blending, you may end up getting um, just a, a solid gray everywhere because you ended up blending it all into one color. So eventually you're gonna need to just stop and um, move on to the next step. But right here, I'm just doing a few little touch-ups of white. I kind of like how that white blends in with the Payne's gray to make kind of a pretty light gray color. Okay, so I think I'm done with the sky for now. And we're going to go in and do some stars. So this is a fun step. Um, I'm actually going to use my two paint brushes to tap and create some star splatters. And this is not usually the way I do it. I usually use a toothbrush, but I wanted to try it this way. So I added some white paint to one of my brushes. Um, my, uh, this is the oval wash brush that I'm adding it to, but you can do it with any brush. And you saw me stick my finger in the water and then use my finger to apply the white to the brush just to get it so that white is just a tiny bit watered down. You don't want it too watery, but you don't want it too thick. And it'll make the splatters when you have the right consistency of um, water to the white paint. And so test it out on another area first before you do this. And when you think that the splatters will work, go ahead and do it on your canvas. So I'm just tapping two brushes together. And when you tap them together, they create um, kind of a unique splatter, something that the toothbrush doesn't really do. You get some um, larger and smaller stars at the same time. So I'm just hitting the two brushes together and the paint is doing that. But if you're used to using the toothbrush for the stars, by all means, you can do it that way too. I just wanted to try something different this time around. Okay, and next we're going to go in and do the moon. So this is um, the easiest part of this moon step. It gets a little bit challenging here, but right now we're going to do something super simple. We're going to paint the entire moon white. So I added fresh titanium white to my palette, a big glop of it because you're gonna need a lot of it. And I'm using my three quarter flat brush. Make sure that it got rinsed off all the way, um, especially some of those darker colors. Get all those rinsed off because we want a nice pure titanium white. So add that to your circle. We're gonna paint this entire circle white. And since we're gonna be doing wet on wet blending, we wanna make sure that 
we have a nice um, sort of thick layer so that it, we can work the paint um, when we start painting the details on the moon. So um, you want to paint the circle white and try to um, define that circle shape. If you lose your shape a little bit like I did, um, you can always go back and retrace your circle and um, define it again. And I, I ended up having to do that later in this because my circle, you can see, got kind of wobbly on the sides. But just paint the circle in the best you can and get it nice and solid white. And we want to keep it wet. To do the details on the moon, I used a half inch oval wash brush. It is, I called it a filbert brush in my tutorial because it's very similar to a filbert. It's like a flat with a rounded tip on it. And my video will show it to you here in a second. And um, with this half inch oval wash brush, we're gonna load it in Payne's Gray and titanium white. So I'm gonna mix kind of a medium gray color. I'd say a little bit more titanium white than Payne's gray. So kind of a medium gray color. And we're gonna do some of these dark blotches on the moon. So I'm gonna start in the upper left um, quadrant of the moon and I'm gonna do these sort of like dabble strokes here, letting that medium gray color blend with the white that's on the moon. And so we have our first sort of blotch here. And then I'm gonna kind of dabble over here a little bit to the right. And notice how I get some variation of lights and darks in this moon. And um, while I'm doing this, I'm actually looking at a real image of the moon. And I'm kind of looking at where those dark spots are and I'm just dabbling on my moon where I see those dark spots. I'm not worried about details. I'm just adding the dark blotches to the moon. And then I'm going back and blending it back out into that white that's still wet right there. And it's allowing the gray to blend in with the white. So here are, here's my base layer of where I see where these blotches are. And I'm gonna load uh, some more white in my brush. And I'm gonna go back in and dabble in and kind of blend these colors out a bit um, with that medium gray that has just a little bit more white on it because I dipped my brush in the white okay and then I dip my brush back in that Payne's gray medium gray and I'm just kind of adding it in here so I'm not really thinking there's no real rhyme or reason why I'm doing this gray here this white here but I'm looking at a reference photo and I'm just dabbling this paint um, kind of doing a uh, little expressive strokes, little short strokes. And over here on the lower left quadrant, it, um, so this moon is sort of a sphere. So the lines got to kind of show, go in the direction of the circle, the way a sphere would go. So if you're painting more towards the edge of the circle, your direction of the lines would kind of go in a curve. But if you're painting more in the middle, they wouldn't go as um, curve-like. Okay, so I'm just kind of blending that in, just dabbling my brush a little bit. Um, not trying to go realism here. I'm just trying to paint what I see. So kind of expressively what I see because I'm looking at an image of the moon right now as I'm doing this. And I'm blending some of those grays back in. Maybe this got a little bit too dark. So if you added something and it's a little bit too dark because there's a white base layer, we can go back in and work the paint and blend it. Or you can go back in and add more white to your brush. So I'm gonna add more Payne's gray to my brush. And I wanna emphasize this quadrant up upper left area. This um, blotch is kind of a darker part of the moon. Okay, you can see how it's darker than some of the other blotches. And then um, you can simplify it and leave it like this, but I'm gonna go a step further and I'm gonna add a different kind of uh, gray in here. I added Mars Black to my palette, okay? And Mars Black is a warmer black than the Payne's Gray, which is a really cool black. So I'm gonna make um, a medium gray again by mixing the white and the black, so more white than black, because Mars Black is a very strong black and it takes over. So you don't want too much Mars black. So I'd say more white than black. And you can see the difference with that Mars black gray versus the Payne's gray gray. It's a kind of a warmer uh, tone to it. 
and I'm just going to go in and add some more blotches and it just adds a, a different uh, layer dimension of color on the moon. Um, again, you can simplify it. You don't have to use the Mars black. You can just stick with the Payne's gray. But I'm going in here and I'm just kind of doing my same short little strokes, dabbling and making these expressive strokes in the moon. And I'm going to add some more white to my brush in here and just kind of blend that out a little bit and pay attention to where you are in the moon. If you're closer to the ed edge of the circle, it's going to kind of go in a, a, a circle formation. Think of again, think of it like a sphere with the direction of your stroke would go a certain way on the sphere. That's why I recommend looking at an image of the moon so you can really look closely of where those blotches are and the direction that they go. Okay, so I'm just blending those back in, working the paint. That base layer of white is still wet, so that's very helpful with the blending. And um, this Filbert brush, or the oval wash brush, is very helpful because that tip is rounded, so it helps to create those sort of softer strokes. Versus if I was using a flat brush, it'd be a little bit more um, rigid, straight, and angular. Okay, so I switched to a round brush. This is a number four round brush, and I'm going to use this for a little bit more detailed work. And I started by um, started outlining the moon here, but I did it a little bit later. Um, the entire circle of the moon is going to be outlined white, but I'm not going to do that right now because it's not fully, um, it's a little bit too wet for me to outline everything, but I'm going to do this crater thing in the lower left area of the moon. And so I did a little circle to represent the, the crater, but there's these, um, I always call them asterisks. There's no, I can't really describe what else it looks like, but it's the lines that come out from the crater and we can see them in close-up images of the moon. So I'm gonna paint that as if it was in the lower left area. And again, think of it, it's a sphere, so these lines would be curved. And then there's one over here in the upper left area. So I'm gonna start with the, the middle circle, and then I'm gonna do the same kind of lines, and these are gonna be just, um, I'm just dragging each of the stroke outwards to create uh, like an asterisk, asterisk sort of shape. Okay, starburst shape, if you will. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint a few little dots in here. So maybe there's some more craters in there. And just using the tip of my round brush just to paint little dots here and there to represent maybe some little white craters that we see on some of those dark blotches. Okay. So uh, some of these dots are larger, some are smaller, they're in clusters, and I'm really only doing it over the darker blotches because it wouldn't show up on the white areas of the moon. I mean, you could to add some texture to the moon, but I didn't do that. Okay, and maybe we'll have, um, I'll take my brush and I'm going to kind of go over that crater over here in the lower left with a little bit more of um, Payne's gray in it so that it shows up a bit. So I really wanted to emphasize that crater down there. So I went, I went back over that shape again and those lines to have it really show up. And see if it looks a little too dark, you can always go back in and add more white to it. Okay, and let's see. So I, I talked about how the moon is going to be outlined. I'm going to do that here in just a second, but I can also go in and kind of dabble with my round brush. Just add a few more um, blotches of very, very light um, gray because there's a little bit of gray on my brush. And then I want this circle to be completely outlined just because the moon is a very bright object in the sky. The diameter of it would be the brightest part of it, even on an area where it has the dark blotch. We would still want to um, 
outline that area as well. So just take your round brush and outline the entire moon very gently. I know this part requires a steady hand and uh, it could also be where your circle gets kind of um, uncircle-like, but we can always fix that later. It's the beauty of acrylic paint. When it dries, all we need to do is just paint over it. And let's see, I'm gonna go back in and kind of add a few more darker blotches over here. Get that, maybe blend that in a little bit with that white that's right there, because that my, my line got kind of thick right there. Okay, and again, we're not going for realism here, so it's not supposed to look like a photographic realistic moon, rather than it's just expressive. Um, I'm looking at a real image of the moon and I'm making expressive strokes in, with what I see by looking at an image of the moon. Okay, so I'm just going to go back in with some more titanium white and I'm going to do um, some more dabbling in there. All these little layers and details just add to the overall detailed nature of this painting because it's a close-up view of the moon. Okay, so now that we have the moon part pretty much finished, I'm going to go in and um, I originally wanted to see if I can fix this circle, but I ended up wanting to do these dry brush strokes just to get that sort of hazy glow around the moon. So I have white on my three quarter brush and I added some more phthalo in there and it's dry brush meaning that there's not a lot of paint on my brush and there's no water on my brush so my stroke is very dry light feathery you can see through and uh, right here I kind of um, saw that as me messing up because I added the Payne's gray it got too dark and then I went back in added some more white and it ended up turning into this hazy gray color but I think it looked all right at the end because it kind of um, matched the clouds that I did. So if there was a cloudy sky at night, there would be this hazy glow around the moon. Okay, and so I'm gonna load some more white here on my palette and I'm gonna do some clouds. So I like to do dry brush clouds and I'm using my oval wash for this step and I'm holding a paper towel in my hand and loading it in the, the mostly of the white to create a lighter gray color, but there's phthalo blue on that. There's a little bit of Payne's gray on that. So when I paint clouds, um, I'm painting my brush in small little circles to form the cloud, but I'm also wiping my brush off in between sort of colors and strokes just to get that dry feathery look because if there's too much paint on my brush, the cloud would be too um, bright, too dark, um, too opaque. That's the word I was looking for. And then when you go back in and add more layers of sort of lighter color, it gives the cloud a little bit more depth. I know that clouds can be a frustrating part of the painting. That's why I think it's uh, easier to do it the dry brush way because it makes it look um, not like a full cumulonimbus cloud that produces rain but just a, a light feathery cloud that's sort of floating by in the sky and um, doing the dry brush kind of gives you a little bit of a lead way because it's see-through we can see the sky through it's blending in with the sky so it's not really taking over the painting 
and really really um, work my brush with this because I'm moving very fast in circular strokes and my poor bristles on this brush are taking a beating from doing it this way but I like to do dry brush clouds because I find it a lot easier to do it this way and um, again to uh, create some more depth or even some light from the moon reflecting just add a tiny bit more white to the brush and it gives it kind of the the highlight in the cloud and you can even make your cloud look like it's overlapping the moon I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to mess my moon up because the moon is the focus of this painting but you could allow your clouds to slightly overlap and that's okay and um, maybe go back in so here's where i add just a tiny bit more white to my brush and just on the the edges of some of these clouds just give it a little bit of a, a pop of white in there so it looks like the moon is sort of reflecting on some of these clouds and then maybe there's just a few little um lonely blotches floating around up there not really part of any storm system or anything like that. Okay, so when you are done with the cloud step, um, I went in and just kind of worked a little bit more blending into that moon. But what I did next was I actually went in and added more stars to my painting because I thought it would be an interesting layer to make it look like, well, maybe some of these um, stars are shining through the clouds. And I like stars, so adding more stars was always fun. So I did that with the same technique of dabbing my brush, um, like a two drumsticks hitting two brushes together to get the paint to splatter. And also, I didn't record myself doing this, but um, I, end up, I ended up using one of the white Posca paint pens to go in and add some manual stars. So I painted some sort of larger circles in there and that gave an interesting effect. So just the white paint pen and drawing stars in there you could even make some of the stars blurry by using your finger and kind of smearing the white after you do the star and then it makes the star look like it's sort of glowing and blurry because there's clouds in the sky and so what i'm doing now is i'm just getting my round brush again and i want to really emphasize these uh, crater lines so i did that i did um the white over that but here's what you can do to fix your circle so if your circle got all blobby and uncircle like um get your original thing that you use to trace your circle um, mix the color that's supposed to be the color that's closest to the moon so mix phthalo and white to get that bright white light blue again and then paint around your circle and this will allow that circle to be um, your perfect circle. So that really adds to the sharpness of the painting when that circle is nice and circular. So that's what I'm doing here. And it's a plate, the paint washes right off of it. So you can see how much of a difference that makes when you redo that circle. So that's it. That is my demonstration of how to paint a moon in the night sky with a few clouds. Thanks for watching.